this video, we solved problem 8.2.5 from Essentials of Statistics, sixth edition by Mario Triola. The problem statement says a certain drug is used to treat asthma. In a clinical trial of the drug, 15 of 267 treated subjects experienced headaches based on the data from the manufacturer. The accompanying calculator display shows results from the test of a claim that less than 10% of treated subjects experienced headaches. Use the normal distribution as an approximation to the binom binomial distribution, excuse me, and assume a 0 0.05 significance level to complete parts A through E below. Now, this is a pretty simple homework problem, but answering these questions requires that you can make sense of this little um, square on the right. Um, basically, you've got some calculator output they're using lowercase p where we would typically use capital P. So I wanted to walk you through at least one problem like this so that you can make sense of this calculator output. First of all, it asks us if the test is left-tailed or two-tailed, left-tailed or right-tailed. And the way we determine whether it's left-tailed, two-tailed or right-tailed is we look at that claim, um, or actually not the claim, I'm sorry. Um, we look at the alternative hypothesis. Now the claim was that less than 10% of treated subjects experienced headaches. So in symbolic form, that is less than 10%, P is, that's our proportion, is less than 10%, or P is less than 0 0.10. And if you look at your calculator output, they actually have that over here. They just don't call it P, they just have prop. So prop for proportion. The, so that's our hypothesis or all our, our um, alternative hypothesis in this case, um, that the uh, proportion, the true population proportion of people who get headaches um, when taking this drug is less than 10%. So that's what they're, um, we're trying to determine. We're trying to determine if that claim is true. Um, since that um, does not contain the condition of equality, that's going to be our alternative hypothesis. Gosh, I'm having trouble. Um, it is our alternative hypothesis. Um, so, so we've got that. And then the null hypothesis would be that the population proportion is equal to 0 0.1. So we've got a strictly less than sign. You notice that arrow points to the left whenever you have a less than sign. So that's an indicator that this test is left tailed. Um, whichever way that little arrow points um, is going to tell you the direction of the test. So if you have a less than sign, it points to the left, it's a left tailed test. If you had a greater than sign, it would point to the right, so it would be a right tailed test. Or if you had a not equal to sign, then you're just saying, you don't care if it's too high or too low, if it's not equal to this value, um, it's significantly high or significantly different from um, our expectation. And then in that case, we're looking at a two tailed test because you know either extreme is fine with us. But in this particular example, we've got P is less than 0 0.1, which means um, that we've got a left tail test. Okay, great. And then the next part asks us for the test statistic. That's a z-score whenever we're talking about sample proportions. And if you go to the calculator output, you can see that the z-score is right here. Now, would they want us to round to two decimal places as needed? So we're just going to take this number, this negative 2.3867 and so on, and we're going to round to two decimal places. So I've got negative 2.386 because six is greater than five, we're gonna round up. So this is going to be approximately negative 2.3. Three, nine, when we round. There we go. And then it says, what's the P value? Now it's a little bit misleading over here. This lowercase P does not actually represent the population proportion. Everywhere in our book, um, in all of our discussions, in the slides, we always use lowercase P, excuse me, for the population proportion, except in calculator output. Um, some calculators will use lowercase p to represent the p-value. So um, that's a p-value there, and they want us to round to four decimal places. So I've got 0 0.00849, so I'm going to round that four. Since I've got a four nine, um, I'm going to round up, so it's going to be 0, 0 0.0085.
Okay, great. And then they ask us for the null hypothesis and what do we conclude about it? Well, our null hypothesis is going to look exactly like that claim, which is right here, P is less than 0 0.1, but instead of having a less than sign, you're gonna have an equal sign. So we'll have P is equal to 0 0.1. And notice that that's the only one with an equal sign on our list. So it's gotta be it. And then in the last question, we're asked whether we decide to reject the null hypothesis. And remember how we do that. We look at that P value, which is the probability of getting a test statistic as extreme as ours or more extreme than ours. So our P value turns out to be 0 0.0085. So that's a probability, excuse me, of zero or 0.85 percent it's less than one percent probability to, that we would have a test statistic that is that extreme given that the null hypothesis is true so we're going to say that's very rare but it's actually happening um, so maybe it's actually not that rare and the assumption that led to us assuming that it was very rare must be false so we're going to throw out the null hypothesis which means we're rejecting the null hypothesis and again, it's because that p-value, that probability is very small. Um, typically what you would do is you'd take that p-value, p equals 0 0.0085, and you'd compare it to our significance level, which is 0 0.05. And we say probability of a, about 0.85%, less than 1% is definitely less than 5%. So we compare p to alpha, p's less than alpha. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis. hypothesis having trouble. Reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is less than or equal to the significance level alpha. So that's C. Great. And then the last one, it says, what is your final conclusion? Okay, so we're rejecting the null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis said that the true population proportion was equal to 0 0.1. So we're saying that evidence suggests that that population proportion is not equal to 0 0.1 and that is in support of the claim. So we will say there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that less than 10% of treated subjects experience headaches. So that's answer D. All right, I hope that that helps you make sense of that calculator output. I really just wanted to do this example so that you would see that lowercase p here is being used for our p value. That's not the population proportion. And I think you can see from context that it's clearly not the population proportion that you're testing against in your null hypothesis um, because of the value of the 0 0.008498 and so on. Um, but I wanted to show you explicitly. So I hope that helps.